Can everyone see the uh, the document I'm sharing? Can you see the screen? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, can, can see. All right. My window kind of changed on me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Here's the uh, here's our meeting notes. Please add, please add yourself as uh, an attendee. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, um, let's uh, let's start um, with um, so we're gonna uh, so we have three topics for today. Um, I want to first talk about um, the intensity function test. This uh, trying to get some more results. Um, so the uh, pretty much the only thing I really want to talk about this is that I've, I've looked over this a bunch and. Um, just trying to get some clarity on like, you know, what we should be expecting from, you know, the, the density test and, and right now that runs in the periodic job. And um, and I'm not, you know, I mean, we, we've seen like with, we've seen all sorts of different results with um, the great pod count, we expect a hundred. And I mean, we see um, all sorts of different numbers. And this was um, a change I'm making locally um, is actually, this is from the test I'm running actually 20 VMs. Um, and I just made the change uh, to run the job in the punct test. I don't know if it's gonna work, um, but like um, my hope is that if it's just gonna eliminate part of the possibility of timing here, we can get a little bit closer to an answer because I don't, it's still not clear to me what the problem is. I still see when I do local testing, I mean, everything here looks great, which has probably been the same for everyone. Like when you do this locally, it seems like it works fine. Um, but I, I do see like, you know, based on some timing, like I would see different results. So maybe this will make a difference in the periodic. So um, if it doesn't, then I think where, to, where I want to turn to next uh, is how we're doing reporting in, uh, in Prometheus. I want to see if we can, maybe have- it's something we're doing wrong. I have some update for that. Okay. Yeah, just one second. I will actually post the com- the my comments in the. Chat. Right. I have one question for you. Uh, yeah. So running this locally, did you always? The thing I most the most obvious metric here is the pod creation. Like we know exactly what that should be, and like nineteen yeah. point whatever. That's that's really accurate compared with respect twenty. So when you run this locally. Uh, did you always see pretty close to 20 pod creates? Yeah, I ran this, <laughs> I, I ran this like, like 10 times. <laughs> and it always I was like, like nine, two, yeah, 20. it was always right around there. Yeah. That's, was, that's great. Yeah. That, that's really encouraging actually, because I was beginning to doubt my, uh, <laughs> I was beginning to doubt this tool entirely, but the fact that you're able to uh, get it to work uh, consistently, at least locally, uh, makes me have a little bit more faith that this is possible, what we're trying to do. Yeah, well, I, I think like what I would find and see, I, I had all different ideas about this thing. I was like, okay, maybe I'm, because I'm seeing this work, I'm like, maybe I'm not running enough VMs. Maybe it falls apart after 50 or something. And um, I don't know. I tried different, a few different things. I tried five, it worked fine, 10, 20. I went to 20 and then I was like, okay, I, I don't know if this is going to, make a difference hey. but I, I i'm hoping that at least like can we yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this will at least might at least give eliminate one thing <laughs> yeah can we go to my comments so yeah it's i just post it okay okay so i did some tests um and there are like two different phases okay so one phase is when i run the test and the kubevirt is already installed, okay? And the other, the second phase is when I ins- just install kubevirt and run the test. So I mean, install kubevirt is run make cluster sync. Okay, so it will uh, replay, you know, uninstall kubevirt and ins- install again. Uh, okay, so, but let's see the first scenario when I have kubevirt running there for a while. And I think it's also your case, isn't it? So you are not reinstall kubevirt every time that you run your test. What's actually happening in the um, 
in the pro uh, job test. Okay, so when the Kubernetes is already running there, I run the experiment and then I I went to Prometheus. Okay, that's the second. So, you're talking about the second graph. The, when the first. The first. Sorry, the, maybe the order is not the best. I just I was just. So this is so. This is um because I, I just don't see anything here like the, just the flat lines. This yeah. is like you're saying this is um. There's, this is you. Um, you did what? You installed. This is when you installed Qvert, and this is what you saw. Yeah. So and no, that's it. you didn't run a test or anything. No, this is sorry. I just want to to update some experiment that I'm currently doing. Okay, so no, this is the, the, what I'm doing here is Kubernetes is installed for a while. Okay. Yeah. It's like uh, I install it like after many minutes, I run the test. Okay. Okay. And and actually, I run the test multiple times in just one uh, one time that I install. Okay. And then I run the test, and I was playing with some slips, um, you know, before running the test and after running the test, getting the timestamps and checking that in Prometheus. So, um, just to double check, you know, if the problem that we are seeing is actually with the tool that we are collecting the metrics or with the metrics itself that it's in Prometheus. So that was my, and, you know, turns out that the problem is with the metric. So uh, this, what it is showing here is, okay, so considering the timestamp here, I put a slip of six sec 60 seconds before running the test and then 120 seconds after running the test, okay? And the timestamps that we see here is, okay, 13, zero, uh, you know, uh, 0638, that the, the timestamp that I collected before these leaps, and then the timestamp of ending after all these leaps, okay? And then I run all this to, to collect that. So, but in Prometheus, and we can see here that the delete, for example, event, uh, maybe we can, we can go to my comments before, after the figure. Yeah. So the delete event appears of 40, uh, 45 seconds, sorry, 55 seconds. And the timestamp actually waiting, you know, two minutes um, after the test. Uh, finish it well the timestamp was 45 so the, the auto tool as expected didn't collect the, the delete event because the delete event appears more than two seconds after the tool uh you know the, the test the test finish which is way too long isn't it um but it's appeared there and again Sometimes it appear first, sometimes it appear later. And, but I, I, I run many times and I didn't see it appearing after three minutes, you know, um, that the, the experiment run. No, no, it's weird, but it's what I'm seeing. And, but the other thing is when I just deploy Kubvert and I run the test. So when I deploy Kubvert and I run the test, uh, I many events doesn't appear. Don't know, things get slow, what's happening? Permit is not collecting metrics. So I know that Kub, maybe, maybe just I know what's happening. So Kubvirt creates the um, service monitor uh, when it's deployed, isn't it? So it's check the name, the Prometheus namespace, monitoring, creates a service monitor. And then Prometheus start to collect met. So maybe this is a slow process. The point is, uh, or maybe it doesn't make sense what I'm saying. I don't know. So uh, no, I, I get what you're getting at. Uh, this is interesting. So is the thought that when we first create the cluster that maybe Prometheus takes a while to begin actually collecting? Yes. Okay. So there's a gap uh, to when we we might create a, a service monitor, whatever it is that pr tells Prometheus to scrape from this endpoint, but Prometheus might begin scraping late um, 
because maybe it hasn't fully initialized or something like that. And we're not maybe checking that condition mm -hmm. before we start the test. Exactly. So I put like, a, then I sleep of 120 seconds before run the test. It start to collect a little bit more metrics than I run it just after that, but it, it's still missing a lot of metrics. And then right now I just test waiting, uh, you know, uh, 360, actually six minutes before running the test. It's a lot it? and it's collecting more metrics, but it's still missing uh, some metrics. <laughs> well, so, I wonder, I, 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 so what's the scrape interval? Is it 30 seconds or a minute? Sorry, can you repeat? The scrape interval for Prometheus, like what's it polling uh, our endpoints to collect I the metrics? I think it's the default one that is 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. So if we wait six minutes before we started the test and then wait, I don't know, six minutes after something crazy like that, would that potentially have enough time for everything to catch up? And I, I think that's total overkill, especially for the after the test. Um, but if we if we pad enough, did you test that? Maybe you're about to get to it. Yeah, I, I think it's worth testing that. So um, I would try. Um, when you uh, when you're saying you get more metrics, is it like you're seeing you're seeing like more um, more of these get populated? Yes. Like okay. Mm -hmm. So you see that there are a few here. If you go to the first one that actually collect all, you, you see more, you see? So I, says, just, I, I just highlight two. Here, yeah, right? because I click it, I know, I click, I filter. So just to highlight the create and delete, but all of them has uh, values, sorry, for the... Uh, so, so is is it that you, you um, can see that I'm filtering off all the metrics that has that, that don't they don't have uh, anything. For example, uh, all the the values should be higher than zero. We can see my Prometheus yeah. metrics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that, I get that. All right. So so it's just yeah. We need they, there just haven't been many events that, at this point, right? I think that's what our the interpretation is. Like we we haven't yeah. seen many. And then here, here we clearly have like we have we have 60s or number on the side 100 for whatever this is, and you've already seen some other events come through. So, yeah, the, the sorry, maybe just to clarify, it was actually bad my graph. So the previous one in Prometheus, if you click in the name, you filter out the other ones, but this one also has like a much more values in the other. It doesn't have the numbers here, but it has a lot of uh, values in the, you can see also that it's the color change because it's it's just filter out, but they are there, you know, it's not showing, but they are there. I don't know if it was, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm maybe a little bit confusing, but it's the, the previous breath should, should, should see something similar to the second one. I'm just filtering highlighting only two events here. So the create and delete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I mean, I, I like the line of thinking, Marcel. I mean, that's like, that's, that's I, mean, I think that's the, to be like the only other explanation if it's not, you know, something with like, it, it's timing or something to do with like for metrics. The, um, the other thing is with, um, that I noticed that kind of gets to this as well. So, um, you can see, I, I, I combed through like 50 different tests yesterday for a few hours, like to just compare like what's going on. And, and, and on occasion, I would see, um, I would see the delete um, verbs. I would see the delete requests on like rare occasions, um, maybe like one out of 10 or more would be, would have, a, would have the delete requests. Um, and, but then- But at, using, at using the old- it, Using the audit tool or going to Prometheus? Yeah, so in the periodic job, oh yeah, using the audit tool. The, in the periodic okay. job, you know, the output results like this. I would, but, I would like one out of ten. I would see, I would see the deletes, the mm -hmm. delete pod counts, and 
and it would be different. It would actually be different. Like I'd seen sometimes it would be like greater. I think one of them I saw was greater than the pod great podcasts. I was like, I, I didn't even know how to read it, but it was like, it would show up sometimes. And then most of the times it wouldn't. Um, if it's and that was great. kind of what led me down this path was because I was like, I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't get it here, obviously, because I don't clean up. But when I was doing, when I had, when I run the test locally before this change, I would see the delete show up mm -hmm. pretty much every time. So I was like, okay, maybe I can try to see if it's if it's something to do with that. You know, if we're just catching kind of somewhere in the deletion process or somewhere. But whatever it is, it's like it, the timing just isn't just didn't seem right. So I mean, this is interesting, Marcelo. I mean, I think um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see what David suggested. Like, if you increase the timing. What, yeah, it is is low yeah. to collect the metric, especially in this, um, you know, in the performance job. You can you can try that. So you know, redeploy Kubevir and run, and then you see you just to double check, and maybe you might see what I'm doing, what I'm seeing. I did that mm -hmm. several times. Okay, so just to double check, and every time that I redeploy Kubevir, things get you know I don't get the metrics just after. Uh, if I run the test just after that, okay. but if if I leave that, I don't know how long. I you know I didn't measure that. If I leave that for a while, and then I run the test, I see the metric. So it's it's takes some time, you know, to bring up you know every you know all this metrics metrics scrapping process. I don't know. And the thing that you mentioned about you see more deletions events. I totally understand that because i think i commented that for you before um this uh, the, the metric is collecting so it's summing all the events even though the one that failed so you can we can filter that for the code like 200 codes uh of the metric but it might be that it it fails yeah 504 or whatever you know code that it's returning the deletion so maybe it's uh failed and then you see more more events there you can see I, that yeah i wanted to know that though i mean that's part of it knowing how many uh api calls were made like as far as like for the um Maybe I didn't completely understand. As far as the auto tool that's uh, that's creating the report, I, I'd like for all APIs, whether it's 200 or 404 or whatever, to be captured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it makes sense to doesn't filter out that, or maybe you know we can later. So let's don't, don't we don't need to do that now, but later we can just maybe you know put like a succeed you know uh, request and failed request something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. I didn't realize that we have the codes here. Okay. So, okay. So we have, I think we have a few, we have a few avenues to investigate. I think, so Marcel, so what I'm thinking, I, I really want to try, I'm going to look at this exactly what you did here. I'm going to launch my test and just kind of find when it starts to track in the, in Prometheus here. Cause then I want to see, I kind of want to see what you're seeing here with the timing to see how it, you know, how it shows up. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting avenue. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try even um, you know with and without this change, just to see if there's any like difference or anything there, and just to see what uh, mm -hmm. see where this takes us. Yeah. Okay. So again, um, the problem is not when. Well, it's when it's actually been called, but not where it's been called. You know, uh, and. And it's definitely it's interesting to understand that because for us for we're doing performance tests if we lose a lot of metrics just you know uh, running the run the test just after the point cover it's something that we um, need to take into account you know uh, in all the tests you know for functional tests maybe it's just not a problem but for performance test that we are collecting Prometheus metrics, it might be a problem to lose information. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we yeah. need it all. I, we, yeah, I mean, I think, that, yeah, we definitely need it all. I think, um, 
it's just surprising that uh, if not like it it makes logical sense kind of what we're doing i just i don't know we're missing we're just missing one little piece of information here so yeah let's try and see if we can uh uh, if we can identify actually what it's is uh, you know is low in start, um, we could you know we could watch for that before running the test. But yeah, I have that, no idea what that, it is. So. Yeah, when you were if we can quantify, yeah, if we can like like enumerate that idea, like I I definitely makes sense that we should have it as kind of like a before each of the functional tests. We just want to make sure that Prometheus is is running the way we expect. Yeah, so if we can figure that out, then I think that makes total sense. We don't even want to have it anyway, like because you can't. It actually, like, if you we can't like for our phone test, we have to have Prometheus enabled even before we run it. So we might even want to have a check anyway. Actually, no, it's on by default, isn't it? I think it's on by default. But anyway, it's maybe there's something we can come up with. Okay, all right. I think that makes sense. I this at least gives me a path forward on what to do with this and. Um, so Marcelo sounds like you're also doing some testing there too, so that's good. Okay, um, so for the second item for today, I wanted to um, take a few minutes to talk about this. We brainstormed this like before break, um, some ideas like defining tests, and I kind of wanted to just get, you know, what our overall picture is, um, like kind of sketch a little bit more of a design here because we've talked about a bunch of different tools. Like right, we have our we have our audit tool. Um, we have our, you know, load generation tool. Um, like we we have these two things, right? Like um, we need to like I want to get some more clarity on like how we um, are going to use these things and like or especially the load generation tool. How we're going to um, how we're going to do tests like like this, you know, um, and like what's our path forward? Um, right. And, so yeah there are different paths okay um i'm actually working on that but for internally i i extended kubburn which is actually load generator tool is based all the audit tool you know, and load generator tool is inspired from kubburn if i would say and i actually extended kubburn to create vmis and collect metrics um it's it's doing more than maybe the the ci sh, you know should do especially for metrics um that i'm collecting for my tests local tests you know for performance evaluation and but i definitely want to extend kubern to have the steady state test so kubern it's also for burst tests okay so that's why all of the discussion came up because I'm I'm thinking about that for a while and I really want to do those those tests. You know, um, we maybe can highlight very quickly here again about the difference about this burst test and steady state test. Again, so I I would maybe stick with burst test instead of batch because it's the what Kubernetes is calling those kind of tests. Okay, again, so I'm not coming up with those ideas you know out of the blue so it's something that kubernetes scalability group is also defining okay and we just want to okay uh bring that uh, concept for our context as well um so the burst test is is you create like uh, a number of vms and waiting for them to be created and and then do just um, uh, only that, okay? So this is, uh, you, the use case for burst test is, for example, failure recover. So, you know, many nodes went down and then they come back again, and then a lot of VMs will try, try to be created. A user want to create many VMs. And also even the pool, uh, VM pool, that David was implementing, it's it will be something like that. So you have we have like um, a burst of VMs being created in a timestamp, and so the definition that Kubernetes uh, gave for that is the burst. So I try to find 
more reference for that for books papers and everything it's be very hard to find so apart from the kubernetes definition anyway i'm still looking for more uh reference for this two kind of tests okay i know that they people are doing that for a while but it's hard to find reference anyway so um and then it's it's for what they call no not normal situations it's for you know suddenly increase traffic in the cluster so that's what's happening with the burst in it it's idle and then suddenly we create 1000 10000 vms and the system should uh, you know cope with that in a reasonable time and also uh, what they say that this kind of burst test uh we should measure the total time of creating the vmis okay which actually i'm not doing i I'm, I'm analyzing this data as a steady state test that i would describe now like that anyway so it will be like the the the, the total time to create the vmis should be the thing more important it's the burst test is more analyzing the throughput throughput isn't it something like that also uh, the steady state test is then what they say analyzing normal situations, which means the system is properly working, and then we introduce some constant load in the system, and which we expect, for example, for a, a cloud, a, a public cloud, isn't it? Many users creating and deleting uh, resource there. So that's that's the steady state has uh, three phase. It's the ramp up phase, which means we create a number of objects. And then when the test reaches this number of objects, for example, we want to have 10,000 VMs in the cluster. It's reached the 10,000 VMs. And then it start to, is the phase, the stead phase, okay? So the stead phase, it will cycle the 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 VMs. So uh, what what it means uh, the cycle is we will have VMs being deleted, maybe being updated, and recreate. And Kubernetes define this as a churn. So they they define that like uh, in their test they have this churn of twenty pods per second, and I think we maybe. I, it, you know, good random number. I don't know what how they came up with 20, but is 20 VMIs per second also. So we delete 20 VMIs, update, delete, and recreate these VMIs. And we should have a churn of 20 VMIs per second for a constant um, time. And then this, this should be, you know, show some stability of the system, isn't it? And then we have the ramp down phase that it's just deleting everything. Um, yeah, and and then you know latency, API latency, VMI creation latency, and those things should be actually being collected during the steady state test. And, and the burst test is more you know dramatically. Uh, tests actually, for example, I just did a test trying to create a burst test, try to create 30,000, you know, VMs, and I actually I break the system out know, the cluster. Um, because of I was creating with a rate of 20 VMs per second. If we have a slow rate, for example, if you create some VMs, wait for them to be created, then create more VMs. You know, with a slow rate, you know, minimizing the number of requests to the API server, it doesn't break the system. But with a very high load for the burst, uh, with thirty thousand, I know that thirty thousand maybe is too 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 many. Um, but it just just gender interesting just to to see, isn't it? So, and but. If we want to test the system with more VMs, you know, it's, it's the steady state test that will show us more, uh, a more feasible test that we can we can run 
and don't break the system and also collect the, the metrics, especially following the, the way that Kubernetes is doing. So yeah. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. my comment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I've got so here's our I don't know, the one sentence our very short description of each of these. Well, so okay, are there any uh, like David, do you have any questions on, on this one? I think you've reviewed it or Jed, do you have any comments on these? Like does that make sense to you guys? Um, yeah, these are great. Uh, the burst test is something really interesting that like Marcella was saying, I, I haven't seen a lot really talk about that in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And it's something that matters a lot. So uh, when I look at like infrastructure as a service in the cloud, there was times when I worked at a previous company that we would have to burst like enormous amounts of uh, VMs to reproduce a QE sort of test. So it would be something like where we burst like 10,000 virtual machines or something, and we would use it for like a few hours and then tear it down. And uh, GCE, for example, could handle that. And they would be able to have all these virtual machines come online in like three minutes or something like that. Um, so there are use cases for this sort of thing. And I think we should at least begin tracking how we perform under these scenarios because it uh, eventually improving that burst scenario improves our control plane, which improves uh, the efficiency of our control plane, which then improves everything else. So it's a it's a great it's a great test. Same thing with the steady state test as well, just a continuous churn. So I'm yeah. glad I'm glad you're looking at this, Marcelo. This is great. And so Marcelo, um, so this like so I wanted to get to, okay. So we have kind of our general idea of these. So like. So t maybe talk through a little bit, like, so you talk about how we're we'll looking at doing this with QBurner, like maybe talk through a little bit of the directions. So like, this is kind of what we have now, but you see, so you, you've already, you're exploring QBurner now. Is that like, we want to go with this or you think we should go with this? Yeah, I don't know. So we already have the discussion before. So like with the, some, some time, uh, some while ago, someone, that was developing Kubern actually, you know, I think it was Roman or David actually, you know, sent a message to them, say why we created something uh, similar inside Kubvir. Um, well, the, the point is, if we have this, the control of this, you know, this tool, we can do whatever we want. For example, Kubern actually doesn't use watch for waiting resource it's doing list okay maybe i want to suggest that in the future to change that there but i don't want to send too many you know like before uh i send a pr a huge pr with a lot of chains for them so maybe slowly we can improve Uber, but we can even have like a you know more uh the way that we want the tool in our covert uh code so I think both work. So we see a lot of just, uh, you know, things on Kubernetes also, they are always changing all their tools, moving repository. I don't think this might be a problem if we want to, to switch maybe later to Kubern or, or keep our own tool um, based on things that I'm changing Kubern, for example. It's, I don't know what's the best. So it, what do you think guys? So. My yeah, concern it, it, with Kubeburn was simply that I messaged them about contributing some virtual machine specific behavior um, a long time ago and I got no response. So I, like I messaged the contributor, the primary contributor directly. But then uh, like six months after I messaged him, uh, he messaged us asking why we didn't use Kubeburn. So I was concerned that maybe there was uh, some communication issues and that that might be a difficult project to contribute to uh, regularly for all our custom logic. I could be totally wrong and maybe they're super responsive and that would be great if they were because there's a lot of overlap. Um, it's just that we're going to need to make some, we're going to need a high level of flexibility to create changes and not be encumbered by uh, existing um, or yeah. we need to do it's, what we need to do. That's the best way I can say it. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. So as I mentioned, I extend that for VMs and I will submit a PR, I didn't submit yet. And 
we will see how it how it goes. I will I will tell you guys. That's great. If, that, yeah. Start testing the waters there, and if we see that there's great communication, there's great um, feedback and acceptance to what we need, and there's good direction with that as well, then. I think that uh, would be a great area to invest in. Qburn would be a great area to invest in. If there's any sort of uh, friction and difficulty of getting your stuff in, um, if it's just going to slow us down, we're just talking about testing uh, infrastructure. Like stuff really isn't that complicated to to do ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marcel makes sense. If they like. Yeah, if they've, if they've got a community that's supporting the project, then we can, we can get changes in the end. And so why not? I mean, I think um, yeah, we've got a good use case. So, I mean, perhaps they'll be open to it. I mean, so I guess, I mean, is that where, is that, I think, you know, you want, is that where you want to go with this, Marcella? You want to try and submit a change and then see how they respond. And then um, maybe we decide based on how that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another another advantage from Kubern, okay, that I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. So the way that Kubern is doing now, it's we can collect metrics, a bunch of metrics from Prometheus, and it can push all these metrics to Elasticsearch, you know, uh, cluster. Um, I'm actually doing that now for my test. Okay, so. It has some drawbacks and advantages about that, this approach, okay? So the advantage is we control the amount of data that we store. And it's it's easier, you know, for example, right now we cannot keep like um, too much data in Prometheus because Prometheus will explode, especially for example, let's, let's assume that we have like six months running the experiments in the performance cluster, for example and or whatever you know in experience that it, we are going to do um it's hard to get to store all this data but with cookburn it's we just you know uh, collect the metrics that we want and put in elastic search and also it puts some index for example the job name the experiment name that it's easier to uh, search, you know, for that in the Grafana later. And uh, it's also possible to do that with Prometheus. Roman was mentioned about that, but it's it's re requires some hacking, like uh, restarting Prometheus, you know, to introduce some new labels of the job name in the inside the metric. So, um, but with Kubern, it's easily add a new label with the name the, the name of the experiment and then it's might be easier to you know to to see different experiments in the in agrafana so i already created also this grafana dashboard for uh last search yeah marcelo i mean if you see features in and q burner i mean that we can leverage i i don't see why not i mean it's like i, I really it's just a question of like if it's something that um you know, like Dave was saying, if it's something we could, the community is, it makes sense for us to leverage the community in terms of not just technical side, but, you know, if we're able to, you know, if we're, we're just not going to get blocked, you know, by, by anything. Yeah, that's, that might be a, a issue, a problem. We need to see that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think like, I mean, I think like the best, I mean, you already have an idea with like, you said watch, using watch instead of list. I mean, we have a great case for why we shouldn't be using list. And it's, um, I mean, I think, you know, they will be responsive. Hopefully they should be responsive to it. I mean, it's something, I don't know, maybe maybe, we'll, maybe it's just like time we reach out and talk about it again, um, you know, and see if what they say. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well, I guess, so we'll leave it at this then. I, it's just like, um, you know, we see where this, you know, Marcel will see where you can take this and see how responsive they are. Um, and then, um, I mean, I think for on this side and the test side, I mean, I think we've, we've I think we have a good coverage of this. I, what I do want to do though is just write um, a README of this. I think that would be good. Um, maybe like, uh, yeah, like just to um, get a sense of, um, just to record like, because if anyone outside of just us, you know, having talked about this, reads 
about these tests, I just wanted to be clear kind of what to expect, why we're testing. And then I think a bunch of things can evolve out of this. Like, I, I think we're going to, we'll, we could have the ability to get some, um, some SLOs out of this eventually. I think Kubernetes like has their own SLO readme they maintain. Um, I mean, I could see we could get a bunch of them, especially out of here, like, you know, with, with churn rate, for example, like, you know, I think we can gather a bunch of interesting things um, or even just burst rate, maybe that the control plane could handle or something. We're going to find some information that we could write about. Um, so, I mean, I, I, what I want to go with this is um, I, I'll write a readme for this just with some more details and then something that we can kind of build on over time with them um, based on what we observe at this mm -hmm. um, when we do this. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you can maybe start with the document that I sent before. So, sure. I, I described yeah, like I mean, more uh, details. This, mainly, you know. yeah, yeah, mainly Marcelo. Would, uh, yeah, I can look at that. Uh, mainly, I just want to have you know just a few general details, and then we can iterate on it if you see things that I don't have that you want to add. Let's let's okay. just keep yeah. adding them. We'll build out a, a readme for this. Okay, cool. All right, um, that's mainly what I wanted to cover with this, and then. Um, and then I think you have a, an issue in Git for this, right? Um, tracking some of what you're looking at with the load generator. I think so. But I'll, I'll I can find it after. Okay, uh, let's move on to um, the last bullets. Um, it's Kubert Summit. Uh, the talks so submission is open for the next, I don't know, I think it's uh, through next week. Um, I wanted to just get your guys' sense of um, like things that we could talk about. I, I was thinking of talking about just the session, like I wanted to do where we talk about six scale, just kind of the things that we've done. I mean, this whole document's filled with things that, you know, different things that we've already accomplished, bugs, and we have the, the tools that we've written and, you know, all, all sorts of things that we have um, in here that I think are would be interesting to the community. Um, that's what I was thinking, at least for one talk, but I mean, you know, what do you guys think? Does that make sense? Or, you know, what else could we do? I think I it think... makes sense to <laughs> talk about, uh, our method. I, I mean, just telling the story of the SIG and, uh, the types of things that we're interested in and, um, the types of things we're beginning to, to measure and that we want to measure that's all pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I was going to submit this one. If you guys want to be a part of it, um, if you guys want to talk about specific topics, we can just feel free. I'd be happy to, to talk with you guys. Um, whoever wants to join it, that's, that's fine with me. And I think, I think what I'm going to do is I think there'll be, I'm not sure yet how long or kind of what I want to do with it, but, um, Based on topics, but we could also cover in here like um, like like features as well. Like like the VM pools for one is like one other one that could also be its own topic. Uh, I don't know if you were thinking of submitting that, David, or um, or if you want to do it in here. Or I don't know what what do you think? I'm not submitting anything around scale for summit because I was going to talk about cluster API stuff most likely. Okay, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm less active. Uh, like I. You know, I join these meetings and everything and I offer feedback, but as far as like output from me, it's been really minimal because I've been working on the cluster API for Kubert. Gotcha. Well, you are the guy that knows better the code. So <laughs> having you around, it's <laughs> it's very good. So hopefully you can you can still join our meeting. So yeah, I plan on sticking around. Okay. All right. I mean, I guess we can just have this one. I mean, I think maybe in here, like um, maybe what's where we can talk about VM pools. I guess we can mention the feature. Um, we have bugs. We have got um, tools playing, and stuff. Yeah, I was planning maybe to present this uh, the Kubern extension that I did. So. Okay. And sh and show use case. Yeah. How to use. Yeah. That. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do that as its own talk? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have up to Monday, isn't it? It's 17th. To send, like, uh, probably need to send tomorrow an abstract for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually it might be Monday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. 17th. 13th. I think it's Monday yeah. or Tuesday. It's 
poses. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's two topics. It's good. Okay. Cool. All right. We've got 13 minutes left. I don't have any more topics. Do you guys have anything else to discuss? Okay. And uh, so yeah, Ryan. So if maybe if if you if it's possible, I can I can also join maybe this six scale story. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I you can do it. Okay. Let me see my solo. Cool. Okay. Um. That sounds good. And then um, David, Jed, I'm gonna add you guys as the attendees up here. We had some people here earlier. I didn't, I didn't know where they went. They disappeared. <laughs> they didn't have themselves. All right, I think we're good, guys. Um, see you online. Thanks. All right. Have a bye. good day. Okay, bye. bye.